Windows XP, one of the most popular Microsoft operating systems of all time, is celebrating a milestone today. That's right, XP is now 20 years old, and if you're anything like me, it probably formed a key part of your computing life growing up. Compared to what came before, it was great. A breath of fresh air, it was modern, reliable, had the best hill you ever saw, pinball, and didn't simply crash when you inserted a USB device. Even Madonna helped out. It was created with the era of media creation and Web 2.0 in mind. And in the early 2000s, this was blossoming. What started as two disparate projects turned into the legendary OS that we know today, that 20 years and three service packs later, still holds a fond place in our minds, enduring far longer than, uh, <clears throat> other mistakes. One key feature of this OS is that it finally departed from being tied to DOS, that while that served us well, was not really enough at the time to support the operating systems and use cases of tomorrow. XP itself finally bit the dust for the most part on April 8th, 2014, but limped on in an embedded variant until April of 2019, a fine legacy indeed, not that being discontinued stops some people. But I'm not going to bore you with a deep history of XP, I'll leave that in the hands of other YouTubers. So let's get to the point of what we'll be doing in this video. Today we're going to be building a Windows XP machine to mark 20 years since Windows XP came out. Now you could take that one of two ways. You could either take the RTM date and treat that as the birthday, or you could do what I did. I went with a date that XP was available for everybody to buy. So we need to start somewhere. And I've decided to build a machine that contains all the most powerful and modern hardware that Windows XP can support without hackery of any kind. But there's a twist. This machine will also be a multi-boot system and a computer that can fulfill many roles that I might need. It will have a good spread of hardware and software support that will hopefully help me out when I need it. So let's see what we're using for this build. So I already have a computer in mind and that perfect candidate for this project is going to be the old PC. I've worked on this in previous videos and in those videos we got it upgraded and functional again. However, it has been left to languish and actually hasn't been touched since then. It's all built into an awesome case by Zalman, a GT1000 from about 2005 to 2006. It's solid aluminium, anywhere between 3 and 5 millimeters thick. You don't really make them like that anymore. It even has a door. It also has a sister case for water cooling known as the LQ1000. This one has a water cooling reservoir built into the door. It would be really interesting to do a water cool build inside this to see how well old water cooling tech works with the new. That would be cool. And as far as hardware, it's based on my old 2008 build board, which is a P5 QLE from Asus, and currently has a Q9650, as well as 8GB of 1066 MHz RAM. The graphics card is my old GTX 550 from Nvidia, and there's an SSD languishing in the bottom there somewhere, which is a Western Digital Blue 250GB. So first we have to get all the old stuff out of the case, but before we do, let's power it on just for fun to see how old the version of Windows is. But to do that, I will need to fix it up a tad. The PC has been stolen from, experimented with, and pretty much nothing is connected up. Okay, so I've got the PC all connected up. Let's see what we got. Can't remember how I left this. Hmm. Nothing. So we had a little bit of a disruption there, let's try that again. And we have liftoff. Ah, oh, it's nice to see that again. I did have to take out the BIOS battery because it just wouldn't find it. Looks like it wants me to reset that. Okay. Yeah, fun. Okay. Hmm. It's not finding a device. Not sure why. Okay, so after a bit of fiddling, we've managed to get Windows to load. Finally. I don't know what was wrong, I think I've pinched the cable. But anyway, Windows is loading. Okay, so this is actually attempt number two on loading that. Okay, S user folder desktop is unavailable. Oops. Looks like i kind of broken my profile. This message is likely because I removed a hard drive that I shouldn't have removed because I didn't bother putting it back. I forgot I'd transferred the user folders, but it doesn't matter. We have core temp here. That looks like the very last thing that I actually ever set up on this. Wow, this just takes me back. This is the old Windows 10 logo before they replaced with that softer looking one. I must say that the CPU was a little bit hot compared to what it was. 
but let's have a look in here. Oh, that, that looks old. You ready? Holy crap! That's actually older than I thought it was. I thought that was 1703. Uh, wow. That's 1607. So it's not far past the initial version. I can tell you Windows doesn't look like this anymore. What else have we got? Skype preview. Got WinRAR. Got some other stuff. Crystal disk mark. This, I don't think I even got beyond actually putting on test utilities. Well, enough of that now. As Dave from EV Blog says, don't turn it on, take it apart. Well, I know we already did, but whatever. Oh, these wind power power supplies? They're rubbish. Don't use them. Now we come to removing the motherboard. This case has a very interesting feature. It has a removable motherboard tray and all you need to do is remove these six screws. Then you can maneuver the tray out. Well, that's all the parts out of the computer, now let's get to building. I won't show all the parts on the screen, but we'll just intro them when I'm about to fit them. Let's go! So first up is the motherboard. This one is an ASRock X79 Fatality Champion. And originally I meant to go for the professional and bought this one by mistake, but I guess it worked out fine. It actually came with a CPU too, a Xeon 1620V2. I won't be using that however as I have my own solution in the shape of the 1660v2. This one's really good and actually the performance of this puts my current PC and the old PC's old CPU to shame. Just look at those graphs. It also came with a liquid cooler and some RAM, two sticks of 8GB DDR3. But I have my own solutions to both of these so I'll be using them instead. So I think it's time to install them. I've got the back plate from the case and it's just a simple matter of laying the board on and, well, screwing it down, I guess. Now for the cooling solution. I got one of these things, the NHU-12A. This is the one with the extra heat pipes and the upgraded fans. Seriously, these things are amazing. Originally, I was looking for a 140 mil cooler, but this thing has the power of that in a 120mm, pretty groovy. Also comes with a customary quality attachment kit. And here's the cooler itself. Man, that does look impressive. Still though, the, the brown colour is kind of weird, but that's not true, I guess. Look at that. Cooling perfection. So this is the kit, you get usual mounts and you get three leaflets which all correspond to the different CPUs you can fit this on. I will of course be using the 2011 which, uh, yeah, it kind of looks complex but at least I know it's that one. And time to get the old CPU out. And new CPU in. Now, I will admit to cutting out a bit of this here because I had a bit of an altercation with the socket. Um, I know I'm positive there, but it sprung out when I tried to clamp it down. And I think I might have slightly damaged it. That is foreshadowing and we'll come back to this later, but time to get the mounts on at least. And now for the RAM. This is a 16 gigabyte kit of 2400 MHz HyperX Beast. And uh, this is pretty good. I actually got this for a good price. I think I only paid like £40 for this. And now for the thermal paste application. One of the most contentious issues on the internet. That, believe it or not, is actually perfect according to the instructions. 
Holes are removed with the plastic, people. This part I really didn't want to get wrong, as I honestly didn't want to drop the cooler onto my CPU. Though, as we find out later, that may not matter anyway. Is that right? Maybe. Time to screw it down. This was really difficult, trying to get it actually properly like situated on the threads of the screw, but I managed it eventually. And time to fit the fans back. Now, the first one went on okay, but the second one, as you might see, doesn't look quite right. The RAM is a little bit too tall, and I never even gave that another thought. Now the fiddly task of installing the fan splitter cable. Seriously, this thing will drive you to, you know, absolute madness, this thing. Fiddly as hell. Get in. Right, time to uh, put the I.O. shield in the case. This took about two or three goals as well. One of those things that once you've done it, you're glad you did. And now to carefully, <laughs> hopefully put the board in without dropping it. This was quite difficult. You've got the weight of the plate on it, then you've got to sort of slightly suspend it in order to get the bolts in. But I somehow managed it, holding on for dear life. Once that was done, we move on to the power supply. I got a basic RM650 from Corsair. Wattage is enough, and it's pretty decent quality. This one's gold. Look at that packaging. Whoa. You get some free cable ties with it, as well as you get a box full of accessories, including a mains cable. Well, obviously. And there it is. I prefer modular because it just means you're not going to clutter the case with cables. You only have the things that you really need. I decided to assemble all of the modular cables outside of the case so that I could just put it in in one unit rather than fiddling around inside. It's black and it's dark and, well, honestly, sharp. So I know it kind of looks like I'm bunging it in here, but uh, don't do that. Also, I kind of cut out the bit where I put that first screw in because it just annoyed me, like, way too much. Now, this is the next uh, point of humour. This is a big graphics card, I knew it was big. Um, yeah. You can really see the problem there. But nothing that the removal of hard drive cage can't fix. Seriously, that took absolutely ages. But hey, at least this time, the graphic card fits. Push that in there. You can see my triumph, I was quite pleased with that. Now we move on to storage. For this PC, I'm going to use some M.2 storage, but this isn't NVMe. What this actually is, is an SM951HCI. The board doesn't support NVMe, unfortunately, otherwise I would. The other bit of storage is going to be this little caddy, which I'm going to put the original hard drive from the other old PC build inside to store images and things on. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, a card reader. That's uh, super interesting, right? So the card just goes in simply. Now, the graphics card does take up quite a few slots. I'm probably going to have to figure out something else there, but oh well. This will do for now. This case has an interesting mounting system with these little rubber nubs that screw onto the side of the drive. And then with a little lever and sort of a clamp, you just basically push the hard drive enclosure, in this case, or hard drive, onto those and then clamp it down. It's really quite genius, actually. You get two of them in the bottom. Nice. Now it's the turn of the card reader. I'm just going to skip past this bit because it's, well, there's nothing really special about it, honestly. Now we turn our attention to the front of the case. There were some configuration ideas I had, and here are three of them. The first one consisted of the optical drive that was already in there, which is at the top. Incidentally, that's never actually been powered on. That was a replacement for one I gave to the 98 machine. Below that is a hard drive dock for reading bare SSDs, as well as a 4 SSD dock. 
that was going to be part of the multi-boot system in conjunction with the hard drive switcher below it. I ended up not going with this because, well, not only did the hard drive switcher get bought, but it was rather expensive. And those 4 times SSD docks, well, they are also expensive themselves, running anywhere between 40 at the minimum and up to about 60. No thank you, there has to be a cheaper way. Version number 2 of that altered things just a little bit by having a slim optical at the top and shoving the card reader up there in one of those enclosures that can manage both, along with a combo floppy in the middle. But we ended up not going with that anyway. The third one is the one we're going to go with today. For the moment, simply, it's just an optical drive with the card reader that was in there, plus the hard drive dock. I'll be doing the multi-boot system in a different way, and you'll probably see that in the software section. As for the dock itself, I have this dual Fantech 3.5 and 2.5 dock, which will work great. Uh, I skipped the installation, it's pretty much, there was a lot of swearing, and I had to massage it with some sandpaper to even get it in there, but yay, hard drive dock. So while everything's in the case, it's not connected up. There we are. Now it's time to test this out to see if the thing actually powers on. Fingers crossed, eh? Okay, round two. Yeah, third try. No way. No way. Well, it doesn't seem like it's going to be my day, is it? The PC is built, more or less. Most things were connected up for testing. But it's a no-go, unfortunately. There are BIOS codes and all sorts of other things thrown out. But, uh, yeah, I think we'll have to leave this until another time. Well, unfortunately, as uh, you saw in the video, things don't always go your way, and things definitely didn't go my way tonight. There was a mishap with the CPU, as you might have seen. I kind of cut that bit out because I felt a bit weird about putting it in. I may have damaged it. There's a little scratch under one of the pads, as well as there seems to be a pin issue. The codes I'm getting on the board are sometimes B1, I got 00 once, I'm not entirely sure, but they do say generally just check the RAM, check the CPU. So we're going to leave this for part 2, which was going to be the software, but this time it's going to be basically looking at the potential problems as to why this is happening. But still, if you enjoyed this video, I want to thank you very much for watching. This is a new beginning for the channel, a rebrand, a new logo, a new name, all that kind of thing. So I'd really appreciate it if you did like what you saw, if you could like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Socials are down below or wherever the description box is these days. And uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a sub and help me out grow the channel a bit more now that we've tried to uh, basically rebirth it kind of thing. But anyway, I'm going to get on out of here. Hopefully I can fix these problems and I haven't uh, damaged the board and all the CPU. But yeah, again, thanks for watching. Bye.